Hey, hello, um, welcome to a, another video um, I'm doing on Foundry VTT. This is focused on 5th edition D&D. &D. Uh, this is my second attempt at this, because my cats were fucking about, and then I stopped the recording rather than pause it. So I've done a couple of things. Um, so this is going to be me showing how I create characters on this basis. Um, what I do, how I go about it. I know a lot of people use the uh, Mr. Primate D&D Beyond Importer. I have tested it. It works perfectly fine. Um, I don't like how it looks. But for quick and ease, it literally brings through all your character stuff quickly. Especially if you're high level, which is really useful. Um, I'd like to do it a different way. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, a couple of things I've done. I've added a couple of more modules just so I have this. Uh, the main ones I'm using for this is compendium folders and what's the other one? Oh yeah, my sh shared compendium. What these do, the compendium folders obviously make it look like this. My shared compendium is something that I have that you can use on Forge. Yeah, you can make it your own with your self-hosting, but it allows you to put items you've created into that compendium and then share it across all worlds. So for example on this, See here, I've made these previously on other um, worlds. I can now just take these features and drop them onto characters. Uh, so I'd like to try and make that. So I've imported those. And we're going to go through our character. So first things first, I did make this guy. Um, like I said, I was playing around with it before. Uh, let's go to my D&D Beyond page. So you can see this is a random character I've done. Uh, I literally went randomized. The only thing I chose was the class. So I'm going to do two. Um, one's going to be a sorcerer. And one's going to be a monk. I'm going to build them at level one. Take them to level two, show you how level up works. And then I will make them level five as well. Um, I will not show you all that because it will just be a, a lot of you guys watching me muttered to myself as I figure out features, but you'll see. So what I like to do is I like to take certain features and make them into an effect which I can just drop onto a character. This is what I've done in my ancestry. As you can see, I have already done this because <coughs> uh, I was playing around with these before. So the way I do these these are effects. You can see this effect tab here. This allows me to apply these certain features to characters quickly. And these are going to be used to affect most of this page. Uh, the stats at the top. Uh, well, not the stats itself, but uh, the proficiencies. Any skill proficiencies and resistances and stuff like that. So you can see here, um, it is literally a feature I've made, um, named it where it's from. There's no text in here because it doesn't really need to have it. The main thing is this effects tab. So it has three things on this. These are all common to dwarfs in general. Um, on the D&D Beyond, you can see the only thing I don't have is tool proficiencies because it is options. So with this method, if it's an option, I don't include it because it will allow people to pick what they want to do um, rather than forcing them to toggle off different ones. I just leave it on and you can pick the proficiency because you don't need to have it as a feature on here. But the rest of them are all features that are applied to this character when I drop them onto here. But I'll show you what they are. So these effects are quite simple. So we'll go with Star Vision. So the effect name, uh, the icon. This is the important part when using the effect in this manner. Uh, this means when you, um, when the feature is on the character, the effect is automatically applied. So you'd have to toggle it on or anything like that. And you can see here, what I've done is set up Dark Vision. So this effects tab allows you to select from a big list of different features on your character sheet. This one is telling the token, uh, the cat sheet, sorry, 
uh, to make 60 foot dark vision. Uh, this resilience. Uh, I have gone with damage resistance poison uh, as for this or resilience here. Uh, oh yeah, advantage on poison saving throws as well. I missed that part. So you go there. Um, I don't know if I can actually automate that bit. Yeah, some of these things you can't automate. It just doesn't work in that way. So there's no real way for me to automate poison um, saving throws. Because there is no specific poison saving throws. It's usually consti constitution. But if I automate advantage on that, they will all do that. So I'll just leave that blank for now. So remove that. Test resistance. And then combat training. Uh, this one uh, gives me weapon traits, weapon proficiency, and I can select these ones here. So let's see what happens when I drag this onto here. So first of all, you can see it applies this, tells you where it's from. Go to the attributes play. Uh, so let's go to the effects first. So you can see here, these all go on now. So doing it this way does mean you will see a lot of different effects appear on your character. Um, if you don't like that, don't use this method. I like it because it means I can go to this tab and go, right, where's this coming from? And I can see this. If we go back to the attributes page here, you can see now I've got 60 foot dark vision, I have resistance to poison, which comes in useful when using things like MIDI Cure Well. And it lists my proficiencies so Battle Axe, Hand Axe, Light Hammer, and Warhammer, which is perfect. The next feature all dwarfs get is stone cutting. This can't be automated um, because it's specific to stonework. Now, if it was history, um, you had advantage on this or double proficiency for history skill checks, you can automate that easily enough. But because it's related to stonework only, you can't. So I just made it a feature. Come on there. There you go. And the last one, which is specific to the hill dwarf, I can see here. Well, you can see here, I've made a separate um, folder for the um, sub ancestry. In this case, is the Dwarven Toughness. So this one, the tells you what it does there. And the effect on this is this. So, um, the what this does is every level I have, it will give it will give one times the number of level extra hit points to your maximum. So we'll see this go up when I apply like levels to the character. But I have tested this and it does work and I was pretty happy about that. So I can just drop this on here and I've got there. And if we go to effects, you now see I've got four effects relating to my um, race or ancestry. I can now hide that for now. Uh, so that's the ancestry all done. So next one would be, this guy is going to be a sorcerer. So for this, we go to our compendium. Now this is all built into the SRD stuff. So because the SRD is um, really available, uh, you will have all that on Foundry. If you do use the D&D Beyond importer, you can import like the PHP and everything uh, if you have the Patreon, I believe. Uh, I don't, so I'm just doing it this way. All you need to do for this is drag Sorcerer across, drop it on. And you can see here, look, it is automatically set up to apply certain features to your character. You can choose not to. Um, I will apply these and it has done it there. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, uh, features. So I've now got Sorcerer's Origin and spellcasting. You can click on these to expand to show you what they all are. So this is useful to know like what spell so I get what level, um, how do my spell slots work, uh, and like I said, Sorceress Origins. The only one you get access to is Draconic Bloodline uh, as part of the SRD. Uh, my one on this, because it was randomized, actually shown as Divine Soul. So I'll set that up. But you can see when you apply this, Saucer, 
Um, if you click on this, it will expand out, or you can tie these sheets. You can pop it out to the side. Um, you can see here it tells you all the stuff you need. This is basically part of this stuff. So efficiency, yes. um, constitute, what saving throws, skills, uh, items you start with. And um, again, I'm going to automate those sort of things in a bit. So I have those set. And you can see here it gives me one level. And as you can see, I now have plus one hit point because of the um, Dwarven Toughness feature. Automatically applying that one hit point. Uh, so that's there. So with um, Foundry, none of this comes set up, set for those. It will just drop the feature on. It doesn't do anything else. You have to do things yourself. I like to do that, so we'll set those up now for a sorcerer. So, new spoulder. Yeah, I've got one. Let's I like to keep things organized so I can find things easily. So, go to my sorcerer. And hit points I need to do, worry about, because those will be applied as they go. Uh, apparently, I've got 11 hit points. I shouldn't have. Uh, according to D&D Beyond, I currently have eight. I put eight in there. Good. Mm, I've overrided that feature. So if I toggle this off, give me eight. Oh, give me eight hit points. And toggle that on. Yeah. Nine hit points. Due to actually, no, that wouldn't work, would it? No, I will figure the hit point out in a minute. That's uh, not what I'm looking at now. So, what I like to do is sort out these things. Like I said before, if there's an option, I won't automate it as an effect because these are various from one to one. What I do automate is proficiencies for weapons, tools, armor, saving throws. So let's do that now. So this is a feature. Let's put up. Uh, I cannot spell, I apologize for this. It says Water. Make sure I spell that right. I see I E N. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so what I do, I have a icon I like for all of them. I need to remember where it is. I think it's in Skills Melee. I like to go on this feature so I can see all the images. Uh, yeah, this one, Sword Sword and Shield. I like using this. So again, uh passive effect. And what you can do is just take this pathway for the image and apply it straight to here. Again, I'm just going to call it this. And you make sure this is on, so when it is equipped, what we do now here is we have our proficiencies. So these are always at the bottom, pretty much. It comes with the traits. So let's have a look. We are not proficient in any armor because we're a sorcerer. Uh, not proficient in any tools. Uh, weapons proficiency. There we go. So you can see here when you choose this, it gives you a drop down. So you are proficient in none of those. So you can go and say go custom. And it's daggers. Dart, Slings, Water, Daft, Light, Crossbow, probably capitalize those a bit more. A bit more uniform. Darts. That's my weapons proficiency there. 
you can see we're now provision in same as ways of constitution and charisma so we add these and you go to these so dc man so yeah save and through actually no sorry my apologies it's proficiency and you go add one uh, so it's charisma and constitution so the add is and it's basically a positive so if there's things like the saving throws um because you just it's a tick box basically if it's zero it's a false if it's a one it's a positive uh or true and it will know whether or not to tick it or not so if i save those close that and now watch what happens when i go features down there you can see here look automatically you can see that my constitution and charisma has been ticked effects now it says proficiency of sorcerer attributes you can see here uh, yeah. the weapon proficiencies have not been pulled through i'm going to delete that because so i like to delete things but if i put it on it doesn't work i will go back and mend it now easiest way i find to do things like this is to have a look at something i've already done and see what i've done differently Oh, dwarf ancestry hat. Combat training. Oh, yeah, we does that. So, get to ancestry, dwarf, dwarf ancestry. Ah, I think it's capitals. So, if we go back here, and we put them all as lowercase. Some of this is trial and error. I, this is how I learn a lot of things on here. So let's try this again. There. Attributes. Now I'm showing us tool proficiencies, which means I've set it as the wrong proficiency. You can see how incompetent at this I am. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, tool proficiency, that's why. Now we want weapon proficiency. At least this night this time I know it will work. On. And bam, here we go. Look. So a dwarf sorcerer is proficient in Barlax, Handax, Light Hammer, Warhammer, Daggers, Darts, Slings, Quarterstaffs, and Light Crossbows, which is brilliant. So he is insight. Oh, don't I roll it? He's proficient in insight. And intimidation apparently. So, so that's his proficiencies. Spellcasting is already been set by here. So what happens is <coughs> as long as you have something one of these that has spellcasting features on, you can see in this details tab. So you can make your own versions of these. But these aren't automated, I believe they're trying to make them automated. What we can do is you can select your hit die uh, and what type of caster you are. And the base casting one. So because it's full caster, the system knows then that their spells work in a different way rather than being partial. So my spell cast ability does need to be changed to charisma because I am a um, sorcerer. I don't think that could be automated, but it's not a massive deal. I asked about to set it there. And what we got next then. So my origin is a divine soul. Uh, so divine soul gives me this and here. So that's pretty much it for also really there's no at level one you don't get any extra features um this all come from your origins which uh work at different ways 
So why we'll do it again. New folder for my subclass basically. And I'll put the one so oh. this isn't where I know I can keep all these features for the right class and one in the right place. This one is the one nope. Divine magic. Yeah, it's a feature. Before I do then, I will just copy this. This may or may not work. Okay, some of this stuff I don't need, obviously. So let's get rid of that. this yeah, so we can see what we're doing so yeah so you can see this what I will do here is remove the formatting all these Table. It looks like so. That doesn't look great. So if I get that. I was going to delete this and put a new one in. So what do I need? So two wide. Two, four, six, eight down. Nine down. Okay, so that's how I did it. It doesn't need to be massive. Wasn't this stuff, wasn't There you go. Okay, I see he's making it one. Either way. So what we'll do is we'll go back. Basically gonna look at pretty much how it was before I'm sure certain. So I just do it. No, oh, go away. Just do this. Zero. Uh, now this looks weird, doesn't it? There we go. We'll tap out. Good, evil, law, chaos. Hmm. 
Keep the crap. Let's see. Now, the AI added some extra rows in for no reason. Get rid of those. So you get your wounds. Lift. Wounds. Blast. Bane. Do then is do this. Yeah, it's a little border, but uh, there's not much I can do about that without playing around with too much for it. Hopefully. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I've never used tables in Boundary, so I don't really know how this works. Let me look. I draw that to like 40. Oh, no. Hey, never mind. Either way. Now I'll do. That's that. Now let's find a image. Let's go magic. We have, yeah, let's go holy. Being it divine kind of makes sense. Find well, something that seems divine ish. Um, quite like this. So, this, again, this I won't automate this because you get the option of picking uh, which one you go with and which spell you get. So you choose that, you apply the spell as you need. But what I will say is, Sorcerer. Oh. So I know where this feature's come from. So I'm going back to feature, and find soul, and pop this in here. Now I've got this. I have two of those proficiencies, so they get rid of one of them. There we go. And the other thing, yeah, level one, is favoured by the gods. Future. Again, this is going to be probably like holy. I think I'm already high on that, haven't they? Um, skills. No, it's not good. Let's go magic again. Let's try life. Okay, back to holy then. I try and make them different. They would buy the gods. The top blades over that. Uh, let's go with this. 
Let's go with this one. That'll do. And we just copy and paste this. Yeah, and remove the format in so it fits more with the foundry look. Now this one is actually going to be an ability. So it's one usage. Um, it's a special usage. Now I, there might be a way of making this work with like a pop up, with like a, when you do a roll or something. But the easiest way is, and we can do this. I will play around and see if we can get that to work at some point. Um, so little server. So, actually, that's something I should have done to divine magic as well. She put in requirements. It's not to fill up too much stuff there. Oops. That one. So target will be that one. Now it says uh, long or short rest. It's a good time to show you. Um, resources. So resource is going to be tied to a feature uh, using this consumption. So what this does, if I, I'm not going to use this. So David, I dot, and you get this once per long rest, once long or short rest. Yeah. And I can go, there you go. So what I can do now on this resource consumption is attribute. There's item uses. Oh, because it's not applied. Mm, idiot. Yeah, but yeah, we did that. So it will be attribute. This does need to be updated once you apply it to a character. Uh, alternatively, you can do limited usage and put one of one per rest, but it doesn't give you the option to put multiple options. It's one or the other. So why I'm going to do this, I'm going to make this as a utility and formula is 2d4, 2d4. You put a chat message in, um, I'll show you how these work when we put like items and stuff on them. But for now, that's how that's going to look. So we drag this onto the features. You see it's an active ability rather than passive. We go here, go attribute, and we can select. Now, it will be primary. So your primary ones, it literally goes how it looks. So you got primary to secondary tertiary. So what this does is whenever this ability is used, it will tick that down. I want to let's have a look, see if this will work. Do I have a token? Am I not? Yeah, so click it, it says consume resource, usability, posts into chat, and that's gone down by one. The other formula, it now rolls that. It does exactly what I want it to do. So I can just put that back up to one. The other thing it didn't do then, it didn't post anything here. The alternative doing of a formula, you can just go. Actually, no, that's damage, so yeah, that won't work. Yeah. But it's just 2d4. Um, duration is basically instantaneous. You don't have to fill most of this stuff out, I'm just doing it because I 
want to get it there. Okay, yeah, so that's basically it. So let's have a look at yeah, so that's those. That's all those features there. Um so we've got spells. So spells will go in this section as well. Have uh, we got the compendium? Now I did pull through the D D Beyond spells. Let's see. They see everything there, which is brilliant. So if we go Firebolt. I guess spellbook. What we do now is we just drag that on. Uh light. Ray or frost. It's all the dead. Shield. And then finally Thunder Wave. So these are all him. Now these ones want to update because I've not like given him like a rest or anything, so it shows he has no spells. But let's look at these features. So if we go Firebolt, for example. Brings all the information through for me. You can see here it tells you what it is, the school spell type, the components required if any. Um is it prepared spell? So this is Technically prepared, but it's a cantrip, so you don't you want to prepare it, click prepared. Um, and you can select how it's prepared. So at will spells, innate casting, always prepared are usually things for racial features or monsters. But here it goes, so one action, uh, one target of one creature, 120 foot, instantaneous, range spell attack, doesn't need to have that in there because it determined here and it's cantrip scaling and it's 1d10 let's have a look and see if we can see how this looks Make an attack roll and then damage roll there you go that. and that's how it will look now I will need to go and look at some of my settings because it's not combining things how I want it to, but that's by the by. I'll do that in a bit. We've got light, rare frost, taller dead, shield, and thunder wave. Now, what I am going to do is do some stuff with rare frost, taller dead needs up changing because it doesn't quite work, and shield. So, I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. So, rare frost. Um, it's all set perfectly fine, except for on this cold damage here. Ah, it's already been done. Perfect. So, what Ray of Frost will do is, if they are hit, Ray of Frost will reduce their movement speed by 10. Uh, so it looks like it does automatically bring things through the compendium. Let's have a look here, effects, yep, shield effect there, beautiful. Self, one round, yep, one reaction. So, yeah, these are all perfect, so it brings all that stuff through for me. Now, Toller Dead is a little bit awkward. Let's get rid of that. So, <coughs> Total dead spell. If they're not wounded, it does 1d8. If they're wounded, it does 1d12. That's a cantrip scaling. It's 1d. I think if you just, I think if you put cantrip in, you don't need to put the scaling formula in. I think it automatically detects it as you level up. I'll find out when I uh, level them. But you can see what it does here. It asks, uh, tells you it's a saving throw. Uh, there's the wisdom saving throw, 
DC is set to 10 because it's based on spell casting. Uh, I currently, I don't have my stats updated. Uh, so those will be updated in due course. Uh, but it tells you here all the features you need to know. So those are all there. So I will can do is I can go prepare and prepare. So these are now prepared spells. Cantrips don't need to do that with because they're there. One thing on spellbook and features. If you want to look for only reaction based spells, click a tab. Okay, to get rid of it again. This is um part of um tidy sheets. It's really quite useful. Um that's my spells. The next is my ability scores. So what we'll do, we'll go here. So you will see as these all change. Although I have realized I haven't put, oh no, I have put those there. Although one thing I did miss is Dwarf. Nope. Um, I don't, oh, I don't. Doesn't have the languages. And they come a bit later. Okay, so let's go back to abilities anyway. So, because it's a random, this is a weird build for a sorcerer. So before, um, I did do, build it once where I would put the um, stat increases for like level one, level two, uh, level four, and so forth as a passive effect. I don't do that anymore because I realized if something affects a stat, it will conflict. So for example, if I fought a shadow that drained my strength stat, uh, if you have a passive effect that says you always have a plus two strength, that will conflict and that automation will not work. So I don't do that anymore. I just input them manually. So here's strength 14. 9, Con 10, Intelligent 8, Wisdom 15, and Charisma 12. Poor guy. So as you can see, as these stats change, so do the bonuses on the side, and also the um, proficiencies. So you can see here that hovering over these, it does tell you what it is. Uh, so you've got mod and save. So because I'm a level 1, my proficiency bonus is 2, I've got plus 2 con save. So plus one to charisma, proficient in charisma, so it's plus three save. And these, so the numbers on the side here, <laughs> these are all um, passive. These are all the passive abilities that this guy has. So, yeah, so that's all his stats. Description. So this now gives me background. That's a feature. Now, this one is going in the urchin. I already have built that one. So I go to my background, urchin. So you can see here, I've got on two features. So first of all, urchin just tells me, gives me these things. And I've set it so, because on this one, these, um, Proficiencies don't change. Some of them will have an option. You can pick this one or this one. But these don't change. Uh, I didn't realize I missed off two proficiencies. So let's add those on. if there's a reason why I missed those off. But not all tools are listed on here. Let's have a look. So tool proficiency. What do we have? So yeah, you can see this is why I've missed off because the SRD doesn't have everything built in. It doesn't give the option to have proficiency in all these. I can play it for custom. So these tools.
let's find a item for that. Let's get trades maybe. So that looks like a tool or good workers proficiencies. Well, I believe in the path. I actually use something else. documents I don't like it something <coughs> something that could be standard in for a like let's go with that I'll do so now so I can just drop this yeah on the features tab action on so it tells me the background and then city secrets is the same uh, and if we go back to here so now it says i'm proficient in disguise kit and thieves tools and you can see that i am proficient in sleight hand and stealth because they were set up so that one's already been built so that's brilliant equipment so we'll go with the starting one uh, Give him a quarter star. Arcane focus. A crystal. Uh, which could make more sense. Let's give it that one. There we go. Now, this can't be automated, but it is thankfully a drag and drop feature so we've really done that on there as well so yeah so we go now is we go to inventory now we'll just drag these on so he has a quarter staff arcane focus Dagger. And he has two of those. Let's see how it explores back on here. It does. Brilliant. Oh, it does just kind of put the pack on, doesn't actually give the items. I'm going to get rid of that because it's not. I like to have things separate just in case. So we have a backpack. Uh, this must be tedious for you guys to watch. I'm sorry about this. I'm just showing you how I set things up. It's in the box. Tallows. Oh, he needs it because, like most races, he has dark vision. Rations. Yes, have those. Water skin. And. Uh, hemp and rope. Uh, you can add all these extra things in if you want to. Uh, so you did have 10 gold. It starts off with 10 gold pieces. Um, most of them won't have much impact, but small my small knife might. Yeah, so what you'll see now, these are all added to a sheet, but not equipped and stuff. So I have to right click and equip. That's all I need to equip. And then I can now make attack roll with this. 
No more damage. So you can see it's done this. This is because it's been pulled through D&D &D Beyond. Um, I just need to go back and move that part of it. Is the rest of it correct? Uh, here's our proficient. Same with the daggers, because they'll be similar. But if you don't make sure that you select proficient, uh, there are modules that will automatically do that for you. What happens is when you make your attack roll up, you can see that he doesn't have his proficiency, only a strength bonus to it. I do it now. You see, now I add my bonuses to it. It's great. Um, so yeah, that's him basically set up aside from um, a image. So you can click here and pick a image of whatever you want. His AC, you can see here, his AC automatically is set up like this. The so hovering over it, it tells you how that works. Uh, obviously, if you don't wear armor, your base armor will be ten. Uh, plus your dexterity. On this case, he's actually got a minus, so his AC is only 9. Uh, one thing you can do, you can see this section is quite blank. But if I went to favourite and uh, favourite, if I just favourite all these. Oh, no, I'll keep them prepared. And then go to my inventory and favour those. And features if there's any features so i want to make sure that's easy accessible so i favor that and stone cutting so no messers are fine so if we go now to attributes page you see here it's basically giving me a quick um basic list of abilities so i can quickly go okay right yeah quarter staff dagger uh favor the gods click on all those and have them all run uh so yeah this is basically him set up uh, I can fill in all the bits and pieces uh, the last thing I want to do is just upgrade into a second level so you go to the features it's nice and easy you edit your class and you just change level to two alternatively you can go to the SRD and drag sorcerer on top of him again and it will just automatically update so I do that and close you see now it's giving me this option for font to magic. I'm gonna apply that. Give me that feature. It's coming on level two. And because of my uh, dwarven toughness, which is the plus one extra hit point per level, it's actually gone up. Uh, yeah, so hit dice increases, and I can click on there and it shows you the hit dice. Uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, features, font to magic. Let's have a look at this. That gives you sorcery points. Now, these are things that can be automated. Depending on what you choose. Uh, but you can see here, uh, you got limited numbers of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as a... I'm going to label this more as sorcery points. Now, when do you get sorcery points back? What I want to do is go to D&D Pelton again. Class. Make him level 2. Here we go. Got automated. Okay, so you get two sorcery points. Uh, yeah, so in there. Uh, uh, we use a bonus action, make a spell slot. When do you get them back? 
And you finish long, long rest. So again, that gives all the points in here. Now what I could do is just put two in there. Oh, I don't like doing that. So we'll go to class features. Now one thing to know with things like um, using things on here and and the axe effect feature, you can't edit them on the card. So if I try and do this and do an effect, you can see it tells me I can't, I'm not allowed. So what we have to do is drag it in. So I drag it in the sorcerer. Either one so. Now I can change it on here. And you can see someone's done this bit for me, which is really nice. So what I'm going to do is take that and I'm going to make it an actor effect. Just go call this sorcery what? Because what I want to be able to do is automate this as per needed. So the effect is there. So it looks like um So let's have a look at the... I don't like it. I want to look here. So yeah, so for every level past the first, you gain a sorcery point for each level you're at. Brilliant. So which is, yeah, this. So what I want to set this as, so I'm using on here the second one. So let's find that. Where are we? Yeah, so here we go. So it is resources, secondary max. I add this. An image for it. Magic. Look at symbols. I look in something like a something overflowing, like a cup. Does that have an interest in the water? That's quite cool. Look at that. Submit changes. So what I do now is I get rid of that. Now, I don't really want Quantum Magic to be used like this because Quantum Magic is just telling me that's where I get my things from, sorcery points from. So instead, what I will do is I will make features. So if we go here, look, I got saucy points. Go to my attributes. Perfect. So you can see that I've got saucy points too. So you pick your meta magics, I believe. Or do you not get mathematics until third level? Hmm. Must be third level. Yeah, so third level you get meta magic. Okay. So what I can do is yes, I can add this back in and this will just and this will probably require like a macro to make this work properly. Um so font of magic literally allows you to create spell slots. So obviously at the moment I can use two spell slots, two sorts of points to regain a first level spell slot. There are ways to automate this perfectly. It would require a macro, which I'm not going to be able to do at this point. There are them out there. But for the moment, I'll just put that he has two sorcery points. Yeah, that's that's my um, old dwarf sorcerer uh, taken to level. And this is him built out. This is how I would um, create him for a character, uh, for a player even. The spells, features, effects, and you can fill out the biography part. Uh, journal part, if I write things down for him. You fill out the background and alignment. Not massively required. Like I said, um, that's 
them like that. Yeah, this has been a, a really long video, I'm aware, uh, of me rambling at making, well, how to make a saucer. Um, I'm going to stop it here, or pause it. I'll come back and I will make him a fifth level one, and you'll see how he looks as a fifth level sorcerer. So, I will be back uh, in another video. I'll see you all soon. Cheers for watching. Bye.